I considered smashing my fist through the pane, wrenching open the window, and vaulting triumphantly into the building. Then I thought, no, that's dumb. Besides, I might get hurt. I just wanted to look in and see what was there. <laughs> A real macho guy would have plunged straight into the spiky, scratchy bushes. Not me. A tree. The statue didn't deserve to be mauled by a Philistine like me. I was no desecrator of tombs. In the case was a spindly tripod, blackened with age and pitted with rust. It was identical to the tripod pictured on the manuscript. A notice identified it as 15th century from Western Ireland. It had been found in Loch Marne at the site of a Knights Templar preceptory. Ireland! Was it? This tripod was found in Ireland. I will have to ask you to keep your voice down. I'm sorry, I was excited. Okay. I tried to sneak my hand inside while the guard wasn't looking, but the case was locked. Touching an object as rare and beautiful as that would have been the act of a barbarian. There was nothing in the urn. <laughs> I expected him to look at it and I'd, I'd rock it around. Now you go in here and die. Iron Maiden. Leave it alone. That closet is over 3,000 years old. Closet? It's a sarcophagus. No, it's an Iron Maiden. I would think. Alright, let's talk. Talk to this numb nuts. Pardon me. Oui, monsieur. Are you Labino? Oh, no. Fancy you mistaking me for him. No. I am the deputy custodian. But Labino does work here. Work? I wouldn't go so far as to call it that. He studied here most days, but as you can see for yourself, not today. Okay. Can you give me any further information about the tripod? Certainly, monsieur. It's infamous. That tripod, that belonged to John D. What's the importance of John D's tripod? D was the most famous escapologist of the 16th century. The Udini of his time. Don't you mean alchemist? Escapologists use ropes, chains, and handcuffs, not tripods. Well, whatever he was, that is the tripod he used in his experiments. What kind of experiments did John Dee perform with his tripod? Oh, the usual. Uh, didn't you study chemistry at school? Yeah, but we skipped over thaumatology. Can I take a closer look at the tripod? What? Get it out of the case? Ah, uh, no! That tripod is protected <laughs> by a sophisticated surveillance system. How sophisticated? A painfully loud alarm bell. How is the alarm bell triggered? By the slightest pressure on or movement of any part of the case wherein that tripod is situated. It strikes me that to call your alarm system sophisticated is... Well, stretching the truth a little. It has never failed yet. The sophistication is in its simplicity. 
Do you know anything about the Knights of the Temple? No, sir. Not a sausage. The sign on the tripod says it was found at a Templar preceptory. It does? Yeah. It doesn't mention John D. at all. Most remiss. You don't know anything about the tripod, do you? No, I don't. I never had much of a start in life, you see. I owe a little education again to my uncle. He was an optician, but he also doubled as the village school teacher. He taught me the alphabet. Away the 19 letters of it. The bottom row of the chart was uh, too small even for him to read, so he left them out. Why don't you start over and enroll for adult education? You know, I never thought of that. Do you think if I studied art and did all my homework, I could be a professor of history? At your age? Dream on. Do you know anything about medieval manuscripts? Not me, monsieur. I am no scholar. Though people often mistake me for one. It is the uniform, I guess. They see the clothes. They are impressed. And they ask you to park their cars? They ask me to park the... No, no, no! <laughs> they assume I am an authority on the exhibits in my care. Whereas you know next to nothing about history. Of course not. All I am saying is, I am no scholar. Not like Monsieur Lobino. Have you ever heard of the Club Alamut? Oh no, I don't frequent places like that. Do you recognize this ID pass? Mm, no. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. Is there any reason why I should? I guess not. Do you recognize this red nose? <laughs> I don't think so. What do you make of this tissue? It is absolutely disgusting, monsieur. What does this tool mean to you? That belongs in a museum. Pardon? It is a priceless historical <laughs> artifact. If I am not Jones mistaken. reference? No, it's a plain old tool for lifting drain covers. Would you like to shake my hand? Uh, not while I'm on duty, monsieur. Thanks for your help. All right, so kind of not sure what to do now again. Hey, no! No, monsieur! No! What's wrong? You must not handle the exhibit! I'm sorry. As I reached toward the display case, a shrill piping filled the air. I froze, then tried to get myself together and act... Now, what did I tell you about touching the exhibit? Uh, was it, you can touch all you want so long as your hands are clean? Not quite, monsieur. It was, do not touch, not ever! Oh yeah, that was it. Can't go anywhere else in here. So the only reason why I'm in here is for this tripod, obviously. Um, watch out! You. Watch out! You will have that down on top of us. Watch out!
Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Come on. I can't see you. Come out. I guess can't. I thought it maybe rattle and fall and break this. Alright. Not sure if I can do anything in here or not right now. Um, the tripod was definitely the one on the manuscript. The Templar connection confirmed it. I was tempted to go to Ireland to check it out. Guess we go to Ireland? Is that what we're doing? Yep. Alright, let's go back and talk to her and... See if there's any chance she wants to go or something. <sighs> I doubt it, but Hi Jules. I found the tripod. Where? In the museum. It belonged to the Templars. It was dug up in Ireland at a place called Loch Marn. I have heard of Loch Marn. I read an article about the castle. Take a look for yourself. A popular gossip magazine? You read that rubbish? No, I write it. <laughs> Oops. And getting laid that way. Professor Nigel Pegram excavating the medieval castle at Loch Marn. That's strange. What? He resigned his chair at Durham University in order to devote his time to the excavation. Not only that, but he canceled the filming of a fourth series of his popular television program. This site at Loch Marn must be awful important to him. He's a professor of history, that old cuckoo. All the same, I'd like to talk to this Professor Pegram. How do you feel about a trip to Ireland? Disappointed. Huh? That I won't be going. I want to follow up the Belota case. If you really think Pegram's dam is important, why don't you visit Loch Marn? On my own? I'm not so sure about that. Where is Ireland exactly? What do you know about Professor Pegram? I've seen a television program, Pegram's Past. He's written a book, The Crusader Families of Ireland. I'll bet he'd be interested in the manuscript. Let's take another look at the manuscript. That's the tripod in the Croon Museum. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you later. Okay. Keep me informed if you find anything new. Just leaving on his own accord? Oh, uh, okay. I thought he was just going to the airport by myself. Just casually call to work garbage, I know. Look more from Paris. What the hell is all this shit? Russia. China? I don't know what that is. I'm bad with fucking this. England, obviously. Germany. Uh, I don't know. 
I don't know. I'm bad with flags. Is it real? Shit! Several hours later, I arrived in Ireland, the Emerald Isle. Hey, I'm deaf. I was to get a bus from Dublin to the tiny <laughs> village of Loch Marne. On the way out, the driver told me there was only one service a day. Wow, that was loud. <laughs> Dude, I was trying to open the sewers. Door, but it was locked from the inside. I took hold of the Greek I don't know. Hard, they were, geography is not my strong point. Let's talk to this whistling Hi Dixie. There. What? What's your name, kid? Who are you calling, kid? Who the hell are you? Oh, no, no, we gotta talk like the Irish. Russo's the name, murder's my game. If you a detective? Let's just say I'm here to find the truth. Cool. Just like on the telly. Cut the crap and tell me your name. Liam McGuire. What are you doing hanging around the bar, McGuire? I'm on the run. Try reinstalling. Me dad. Why? Did you do something bad? I ain't done nothing, boss. It's... You can tell me, kid. Is it your dad? It should be the smiley face right next to the word. He drinks. The purple uh, chat box, lower right corner. His evil throat. And should be. me poor old mother, bedridden and dying of presumption. I tried to buy her medicine. Chop firewood for father Mahoney till me fingers bled. The old skin flint cheated me too. But I took the pennies he gave me back home. Look, ma, says I. See what your darling son has earned with his own sweat and blood. When suddenly, me dad appears and grabs the loot. I'm off to Dublin, heavy drinking, says he. Watch out till I get back. That's why I runned away. Something in the grin on his face told me he wasn't being strictly truthful. Compared to him, Huckleberry Finn was a candidate for altar boy of the year. <laughs> Do you know a man called Pegram? Can you describe him like on the telly in the cop shows? He's an English archaeologist. I know the man you mean if he's the one. Can you tell me where I'd find Pegram? No, I can't because he's not here now, but if I seize him, I'll ask him. Do you know what Pegram was doing in the castle? Digging for buried treasure. Jewels and gold and skeletons, like in the films. Do you know anything about Pegram's dig? He wouldn't let me anywhere near it. I offered to help, but he chased me off. I didn't want to see his smelly old hole anyhow. Did anyone from the village work at the dig? Pegram bought some students some bums with him. He reckoned no one in Loch Marne would know what to look for. The only local guy who worked for him was Sean Fitzgerald. What does this Fitzgerald guy look like? Big head, big ears, and face irons. What? You know, specky tackles, glasses. He's blind as a bat without him. Have you seen a guy dressed as a clown? Here in Loch Marne, they all dress like clowns. The man I'm looking for is a dangerous psychotic. <laughs> Jesus, it's just like that film I saw. Did this clown see? And he's after this kid <laughs> who saw him kill a guy. He tries to warn the sheriff. Only no one believes him. Then, a... while he's in the tub, the clown cuts him up with a chainsaw. My God, that doesn't sound suitable for a kid like you. Who are you calling a kid? I'm 25. <laughs> yeah, right. You're not a day over 14. Oh no, it's 25 that it's I am. Like it. Married with a car and three kids. It. Ten kids if you count your wives. 
I don't know if that's what they meant. What can you tell me about the castle, McGuire? What do you want to know? Well, can I get inside? No. It's locked up. Does anyone live there? No. Only... What? Back in 96, oh, no. You know something about the castle you're not telling me, don't you? I don't even know if the It movie no. was out. What is it you're covering time. up? Is it something you're scared of? I ain't scared of nothing. I'll give you one last chance to tell me about the castle. Oh yeah? And what if I don't? Then I'm taking you back to school. Oh. There's a ghost. <laughs> I'm gonna go to school. The Phantom Aloch Man. You're not telling me you believe in ghosts, are you? Yep. Mister, I seen it They're with real. my very own eyes. Last Tuesday night, I went up to see what that dig was about. I just reached the top of the wall when I hear I'd had one in my own house. What sort of noise? A horrible snuffling and snorting. Like O'Brien's pig, only worst. It was coming from inside the castle. Did you find out what was making the noise in the castle? No fear. I just sat there on the wall like Humpty Dumpty. The moon was cracked and greasy like an old dinner plate. The yard so was my ass. shadows. I could have been hiding anything. I would have gone home, but my legs had lost their stuffing. God, man, I hate talking to this guy already. Did you get to see the ghost? Indeed I did. And a fearsome sight it is too. I sat on my ass, waited. <laughs> While the moon went down, then out it comes from the shadows, all grey and tattered and hunched over like an old bent willow. Then I hears the spluttering and splashing an horrible laughter in the dark. I was so scared. Why, I fell off the bloody wall. I guess you got to get everybody to put you back together again. I'm sure there's a rational explanation for what you saw at the castle. There is. The bloody place is haunted. Uh, here we go. Have you ever seen anyone wearing one of these? That belongs to the killer clown you're looking for. That's right. Can I have it? Sorry, I'm keeping this as evidence. You should run tests on that, mister. You could identify the murderer with a sample of his snot. Yuck. I don't think so. I guess that would be kind of... Have you ever seen any... No. Have you ever seen this man before? What Wait, a you get a DNA sample, I'm sure. I don't no. need again. I never seen him. Take a look at this, Maguire. Hmm. It's an ID card. What of it? Ever heard of Thomas Merlin or the Gruber Electronics Corporation? No. Do you recognize this matchbook, McGuire? No, sir. I never seen it before in my life. What does this tissue mean to you? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> okay, that's it. How about what would you think of my tool, young Mr. McGuire? What do you think this tool is used for? Lifting drains. Dead right. How did you know that? Work experience course at school. That gives me a choice of going down the drains or up the chimney. You're kidding. Give me your hand. Get lost. Oh, come on. I just want to show you a little trick. No way, mister. I don't do tricks. Father Mahoney told me I'd burn in hell if I did. I just want to shake your hand, that's all. Oh, all right. Gotcha. Neat, huh? Finally got somebody. Didn't feel a thing. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next game. <laughs> I accomplished my goal. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. Oh, no. There's too many people here to talk to. Oh, excuse me.
Let's go talk to this guy over here so we can get sick. Hi there, old timer. <laughs> what? Nasty cold you've got there. As soon as the words left my lips, I thought that him. too. Is there such a thing as a cold which isn't nasty? I put the question. And a guy in yellow jacket. Father says I. Yeah. Why were we born? From over the hill. Not. What did he say? He said it's my reward for being out all night like a sinner. <laughs> Pious prig. Anyway, this is no ordinary cold. It is the hay fever. Polynosis? Thank you. You're not a policeman, are you? Excuse me? Police. No. Yeah, I can sure use a handkerchief. I'd know it if you were. You could make use of this tissue. Never use them. Those things are unhygienic. I just continuously sneeze on everybody as everyone gets sick. I'm looking for Sean Fitzgerald. Have you seen him? Never heard of him. Don't you come from around here? None of your business. Well, it looks like him sitting down at the table. From, I'm from California. That's your problem. That must be Fitzgerald here. Do you know Pegram, the archaeologist? That's the scrawny fellow who was poking around at the castle, isn't it? Sure. No, I don't know. Oh, excuse me. Were you aware that Pegram was conducting an archaeological dig? I don't meddle in other people's affairs. They don't interest me. Do you know where I can find Pegram? I told you, I never heard of him. Can you tell me how to get into the castle? Don't even think about it, me bucko. Doc Barn Castle. I don't know that one. Haunted. I don't think. That's what the kid outside told me, but I don't believe it. Then you're a fool. Have you ever seen the ghost? To be sure. With me very own eyes. Can you describe the ghost? It was horrible. A wee stunted beast. Long beak. Straggly, flappy wings. Are you sure it wasn't a wild animal? A rabbit or a skunk or something? Skunk? In Loch Marl? That'll be the day. No, that was a ghost, to be sure. I think I know what you saw on the castle wall. I know what I saw. I don't think so. It was the kid, <laughs> McGuire. I don't what? think so. He was up on the wall last Tuesday night. He thought you were the Phantom of Lockhart. Son of pick in Discord. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of does. Kinda. Ghosts don't bother me. I still want to visit that castle. You can't. It's not open to the public. There's no one around public. to stop me, is there? That's right. Nothing human, anyhow. Can I buy you a beer? Very kind, I'm sure. But I don't drink the stuff Leary sells. What's wrong with it? Thank you, I've Arthur Edison. I've seen what it can do. What does this red nose mean to you? I suppose you're collecting for charity. No, I'm not. I want to know if you've seen someone... I'm waiting for someone like to it. give me a Rudolph no, Red... Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer reference. What does this red... Nothing. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Is that supposed to be you? No, I don't have a scar on my face and I'm not from the Middle East. I can't tell without my glasses. Take a look at this ID card. Take a look. Oh yes, little plastic picture. I don't suppose it means anything to you, does it? No. Can you identify this tool? No. <laughs> no. What does this matchbook mean to you? Nothing. Go away and stop bothering me. You could make use of this tissue. <laughs> Never use them. No. 
Hey, would you like to shake my... Uh, no, on second thought, forget it. <laughs> I'll see you later. Mr. Fitzgerald? What? I need to speak with you urgently. What's the problem? Can I get you another drink? Oh, no, thank you. I shouldn't be drinking at all. I want tablets for my nerves. Just not to shake my throat. Out. Did you work at Professor Pegram's dig? <laughs> what gave you that idea? McGuire says you did. You don't believe that damn hooligan, do you? Why not? His probation officer could tell you a tale or two. Have you heard about the gem which Pegram found? I heard a rumor, but you can't believe everything you hear or see, can you? Where can I find Professor Pegram? I heard he's gone fishing. I don't know where. What can you tell me about the castle? There is nothing there. Just an old ruin. How old? I really couldn't tell you. Have you ever explored the castle yourself? I used to play there sometimes, when I was a kid. Then one of the little ones fell off the wall, broke his head and died. Broke his head? There anymore. <laughs> you haven't been up there recently? <laughs> the hell's no. that mean? how someone break their head? What does this red nose suggest to you? Blood. Why is that? I used to bleed a lot when I was a kid. Every time there was a playground scrap, I'd end up with a bloody nose. I wouldn't have minded, but I wasn't even involved in the scraps. It's because you're a nerd. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? <laughs> uh, no. He's a you bully. So. Look closely. He has a scar on his face. No, I'm sure I don't know him. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I'm sure I don't know him. Do you recognize the... Oh, no! I... Check out this pass. <laughs> yeah. It's yours, is it? Not exactly. Do you recognize the name? Thomas Merlin. No. Never heard of him. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? No. What does this tissue suggest to you? Nothing. What do you think this tool is used for? Uh, something to do with horses? Wrong. It's for opening manholes. <laughs> I like how he's gonna correct everybody too. Well, you learn something every day. Wrong. This is for opening manholes. Like, like the person really gives a fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, come on. Shake my hand. It's a trick, isn't it? Damn it! You're right. I can't seem to fool anyone. Got the kid outside. You're talking about. See you later. He wasn't listening. No. <laughs> Hello there. Uh, my name's George Stobart. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Hey, my brain. Uh, can I help you? Do you know where I can find Pegram? You're too late to meet that fella. Is he dead? Not that. But he's gone from the village. I saw a pint with our esteemed host, I might add. Why is Pegram's departure upset the landlord? He's lost a paid guest, that's why. More than that, there's the question of an unsettled bid. Poor Michael's seen red over the business, and I don't blame him. Can you tell me more about the landlord? Mick Leary? He's what you call a, a would-be sophisticate. The trouble is, his idea of sophistication extends as far as putting paper in the lavatory. I never worked out why he did that. It's much too dark in there to read. That's true. Have you ever run your hand over the back of the door? The graffiti is written in Braille. Do you know where Pegram has gone? I'm sorry, but I don't. He oped anchor in the dark and shipped out before the dark. Why did he do that? Who knows? A guilty conscience or a secret assignation. Whatever the reason, he'll not be missed in Loch Maybe now the fuss about the gem has died down. We can get back to Norway. What can you tell me about the gem which Pegram found? Now there's a gem. 
which should never have been taken. A man would have to be full of greed to covet that stone. What's your interest in the jewel? You're not a reporter, are you? Oh no. Thank the Lord for that. What can you tell me about the castle, Mr. O'Brien? It's a fine sight now, isn't it? Dates back to the 10th century, you know. Most of the existing building was added much later, of course. Or are the ruins open to the public? Oh no, it's much too dangerous. Anyway, there's nothing of interest remaining. Pegram thought otherwise, didn't he? Ah, but it's not difficult to get them history boys excited, is it? Give them a bone to play with, and they're happy as puppies. Give them a what? <laughs> you want me to give them my bone? So they can play with it? What? Was it Pegram who dug up the tripod of the castle? The same man, if he wasn't his twin brother. And can you guess what he did with the tripod? He sent it All right, to the museum in God. Paris. I've seen it. I can think of quite a few things he's done with the tripod. Have you heard of the Phantom? More than that, I've seen it. And let me tell you, it's a dreadful spectacle. So it's not just a local legend. There really is a Phantom of Lochmar. Oh no. I was talking about the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> I thought that was going to come in. Does this red nose suggest anything to you? It's a clown's nose, isn't it? I haven't been to a circus since I was 10 years old. O'Donnelly and I walked all the way it's probably to the same for me. 15 miles in our bare feet. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Nope. I've never seen him before. What can you tell me about this ID pass? Groove Electronics. I've never heard of it. Does this tool mean anything to you? I'd say it was for lifting manhole covers. How come you know that? I'm a man of the world, Mr. Stobart. So we got three right answers so far. I don't know what that's all. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? The design is Middle Eastern, I'd say. What do you make of this tissue? Well, I guess that muck on it is grief paint. There's no fooling you, Mr. O'Brien. Did I show you this tissue? Yes. I'd like to shake you by the hand, Mr. O'Brien. I'd rather not. You see, I happen to notice that vibrating buzzer in your palm. <laughs> Just be glad that's the only thing sitting in my palm of my hand. Goodbye for now. Hi, my name's Stobart, George Stobart. Hello there, mister. What can I do for you? Do you know Professor Pegram? Do I know him? Do I know the good professor himself? No, I don't. I mean, I know who he is, but I don't know him to talk to. Do you know anything about Pegram's excavation? Only that he didn't have the right tools for the job. What he needed was shovels and a JCB. Pegram was digging for historical remains, not coal. Is that a fact? What the hell for? It's the science of archaeology, part. Understanding how people used to live by what they've left behind. One day archaeologists might be digging up our remains. Imagine that, Mr. O'Brien. I wonder what they'll find. Well, it won't be arrowheads and beakers. I gotta say, I mean, when it comes to this game, I'm quite impressed with all the little individual animations and stuff that are going on. Just guy in the back, like when, like when they talk. Even on talking to him, he talks and his head's moving and shit. You know what I mean? Is it Quite impressive, all the little uh, a valuable gem. All time and effort put in everything. First, I heard of it. Where have you been, Pat? For that gem at the so he even turns his head to look at the other guy. It's just a little things. Nobody told me. A lucky sod. So that's why he scampered. Did anyone from the village work at Pegram's dig? I tried it myself, but that high and mighty history man called me incontinent. What a nerve. Hadn't I dug more holes than the rest of them put together? Do you remember seeing Sean Fitzgerald at the dig? Hmm. Let me see now. I think me brain box needs a spot of lubrication. 
Can I buy you a drink? You most certainly can. Give me a drink for my friend here. Who? Doyle? Has he conned you into buying for him? Shame on you, Patrick. Same again. Just a point this time, Michael. One point of round coming up. I mean, look at all that little animations. Jesus. It's impressive. Do you remember Sean Fitzgerald now? I can picture the scene as if it was only last week. Come to think of it, it was only last week. Fitzgerald was there all right. Him and a bunch of students. He was speaking with the boss man. Can you tell me anything about the castle on the hill? Oh, I don't know much about anything. You should ask Mr. O'Brien here. He just joined up writing. Would you be one of them history fellows yourself? History fellows? I'm say yeah here. That's right. Professor Stobart, Miskatonic University. You're an archaeologist, and you're asking us about the castle. Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. The gentleman was talking to me. How come you didn't leave with the others? I didn't know they'd gone. Oh, yes. Packed their spades and shovels, and away they went. Seems I missed all the excitement. I wonder if that would lead to anything. What does this false nose mean to you? <clears throat> uh, no, you're a clown. No, not me. Ah, <laughs> you're a good one, aren't you? Did you hear that, Michael? I hate clowns. <laughs> Listen to this fella. <laughs> I hate clowns, says he. Isn't he just the funniest man you ever did see, Michael? He's not a clown, Doyle. He's not even remotely funny. Thanks. I just, I, I mean, keep in mind, this is from 1996, right? But just the fact that you have one character he's talking to, another one will... I'll participate in the conversation. You all got their separate animations. It's just really cool. Everything's in sequence with one another and stuff. That's what I'm saying. It's pretty quite impressive. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? It's a handsome mug on that fella, to be sure. Is he a film star? Don't be fooled. Yeah, porn star. This is the face of a psychopathic killer. No. Well, there's one in the eye for me and my men. Does this security pass mean anything to you? Uh, mm, well, no. What do you make of this tool? It's for lifting manhole covers. That's, That's four. Right. I uh, found it in Paris. Well, you look at that. <clears throat> A French sewer key. Marvelous. Do you recognize this matchbook? No. Does this tissue mean anything to you? No. But you should show that to my granny. She could tell you fortune from it. From a soiled tissue? Sure. Some people read tea leaves. My granny reads handkerchiefs. May I shake your hand? No, you can't. Well, how come? Because I'll spill me beer if you do. <laughs> Bye for now. Top of the morning to you. I beg your pardon. Well, that's what you Irish say, isn't it? Do you want something? Well, or are you just racist? Your xenophobia? <laughs> well, I, I was trying to be sociable. Hmm. Is it a room you're after? Is it a room you're after? Sure. That's not a bad idea. Do you have a vacancy? I could. If you don't mind waiting until the last guest checks out. No problem. When will that be? When the Undertaker comes to collect him. I see what you did there. Do you know Sean Fitzgerald very well? I know him enough not to sell him more than two pints. He's like a kid when he gets a few beers inside him. I'm not surprised. He's on medication. For his nerves. There's nothing wrong with his nerves. He's just screwy. Do you know a man called Pegram? Indeed I do. Are you a friend of his, by any chance? Oh no, I'm just trying to track him down. <laughs> Me too. That son of a bitch should be locked away. 
Did Pegram stay here? That's right. In the best room in the house. That's the one with the bed. Can I see Pegram's room? It's been taken by one of the brothers from the reformatory. They come every year for spiritual refreshment. That's a good one. Their idea of refreshment is a good full of stout. I wouldn't want to disturb a man of God. Especially not a big fella from the bad boy's home. I don't blame you, Mick. That brother's got muscles like a muscle man. Have you served any, uh, clowns recently? No. You're the first today. Seriously. <laughs> I'm not a dressed in a clown Touché. Or would he be having a little white dog with a black patch over the eye? I shouldn't think so. What can you tell me about the castle? You're the second person to ask me that today. I don't know anything about the castle. It's only an old drone anyway. Who else was asking about the castle? He said he was a reporter. He was asking about the little people. I could have told him a tale or two about the little people. He might have paid me to hear what he wanted me to say. Anyway, I <laughs> chucked him out Thanks. on his arse. <laughs> Good for you, Mick. That's the way to deal with journalists. I'll try a glass of beer, please. Is this your first pint of real ale? Uh, well, I guess so. What's real ale, anyhow? Beer that's grown from natural ingredients to traditional methods. It shouldn't be kept under pressure or refrigerated. And finally, it should have a beer? body and distinctive character. In other words, it's flat and warm with bits in it, and it makes you fall over. I wouldn't drink a warm beer. No, I wouldn't. Does this false nose mean anything to you? It's not Red Nose Day again, is it? Uh, I don't know. But this is part of a clown's costume. I know that. Good God almighty. What do you take me for? Idiot. Do you recognize this man? No, I don't. What do you want with him? I've got a score to settle. I don't want any trouble in the bar, mister. If it's a fight you're looking for, see Father Mahoney. A priest? A man of the cloth? Sure. And he teaches the boys how to box at the youth club. Oh, now, to Mahoney, I'm sure he teaches the boys a lot of things. Isn't that right, Pat? Didn't he teach you all the art of pugilism? Doyle. Sorry, Michael. I was miles away. What did you say? Ah, never mind. Here's something which might interest you. Huh? Well, what is it? My passport to the sewers of Paris. Is that so? Did you see the snow curve last night, Mr. O'Brien? We haven't got a television, Michael. I know that. Um, why is it, if you don't mind me asking? If God had meant us to watch television, we'd all be like Doyle. I take it no one wants to hear about my underground escapades. I'd rather drink me own beer. Do you recognize this matchbook? No, sir. <laughs> Does this tissue mean anything to you? That's disgusting. <laughs> Uh-huh. I found it in the sewers. Well, what's the idea of waving it <laughs> in my face? You're worse than old Ron. Put it away, man. Hey, bartender? Uh, landlord, if you don't mind. Sorry. Uh, shake my hand, why don't you? Now, why should I do that? What have you got up your sleeve? Nothing. Come on, just shake my hand. Uh, not just now, mister. I have to be careful on account of the health restrictions. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Some more reason to do Thanks. it. Somehow, I'd managed to drink the thick, sweet brew. I felt strangely compelled to order another, even though my every instinct warned me against it. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Excuse me? No customers behind the bar. Ever. 
Get. So we can go back there. Alright. Hello. Doyle told me you definitely worked at the dig. You don't believe him, dear. Patrick Doyle is a moron and a scoundrel. Even so, he saw you talking to Pegram. You can't prove that, mister. See you later. Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. Hello there. What now? Oh, nothing. All right. Hi, do you speak English? Well, no. Uh, what if I was to say no? An implication of cognizance shrouded in denial. A pretty poser of a paradox indeed. I gave him the look I'd perfected when I was 12 and was going to be the greatest hypnotist of all time. It was a killer. Are you attempting to hypnotize me or is it the constipation you're suffering? I was a little <laughs> out of practice. Have you seen Professor Pegram? No. He's packed up and gone. Do you happen to know where? Back in England, I suppose. Do you think Pegram's disappearance is due to the curse? Look at the facts. He dug up the gem. He disappeared. Bingo. It doesn't take a degree in mathematics to work that one out, does it? You don't have to be a smarty Pythagoras with a calculator. I guess not. Pegram has run off with the gem. What can you tell me about the castle? Not much, I'm sorry to say. Most of its history is long forgotten. Ah, but if these old stones could only speak, what stories they'd tell. Stories to make your toes curl and your blood run cold. You know, this castle is said to be over 600 years old. Who built the castle? Mad Phelan, the first lord of Loch Marne. Well, I say lord, but actually he was little more than a village chieftain. He built his castle from the remains of the Templar Preceptory. Where was the site of the Templar Preceptory? Right here, on Temple Hill. Phelan built right on top of the old wall. It's said that deep beneath these walls, there's a Templar Chapel. Did Pegram discover the chapel? I don't know. His workers were sworn to secrecy. Do you mind if I climb up your haystack to get into the castle? What? <laughs> it break your stupid neck. <laughs> kind of question, sir. You think I stand by and see your brains dashed out? I'd be very careful, and I promise not to sue. You won't get the chance, not while I'm here to stop you. Good book? A book? It's a passport to a world of fantasy and imagination. Yeah? What's the title? Creative Shelfing for Beginners, the 1978 edition. What's so cool about home improvement? There's nothing like Tim Allen. the resinous autumnal aroma of seasoned wood, the rhythmic rasp of the plain. Ah, no wonder our Lord came to earth as the son of a humble carpenter. I bet he was a wizard with a chisel and a length or two before. Surely the betrayal of Christ's adoptive family as humble artisans is a symbolic metaphor. I don't know about that, but I know they were carpenters. Haven't you read the book? Well, no, but I have seen the greatest story ever told, and I don't recall Jesus putting up any shelves. Does this false nose mean anything to you? You're a circus clown. No, but I got to change someone who echo disguised and himself as a clown. Is that a fact? Why did you do that now? He's a psychotic killer. I think he may be connected with Pegram's disappearance. So I should record it with a different mic or something. Did I show you this note? Yes, yes. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? 
No, but I wouldn't trust him. His eyes are too close together. He's not a friend of yours, is he? Oh, no. Far from it. In fact, I believe it's the face of a killer. I knew it! Piggy eyes. Can't trust him. Do you recognize the name on this card? I can't read that little writing. It says Thomas Merlin, Gruber Electronics. Is that your name? Tommy Merlin? No. But what a great stage name. It had what my high school hypnosis act had lacked, style and class. For a few seconds, I bathed in spotlights on a thundering tide of applause. Tommy Merlin, hypnotist. Are you all right? I'm fine. I just remembered something. What do you make of this matchbook? Seems ordinary enough to me. What do you make of this tissue? That's a sorry sight to wave about in public. Oh, it's theatrical grease paint. And that makes it all right, does it? I must remember that next time someone complains about the state of me handkerchief. <laughs> does this tool mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Is it used on sheep? No, it's for lifting the covers off drains. Never. How? Well, the end of the tool fits into the hole in the cover. Uh, they'd slip out. Angles are wrong. You'd never do it. I have. I did it in Paris. <laughs> Would you like to shake my hand? What is this? I don't do that male bond and stuff. I have to go now. Get away, you silly noodle! Can't you see the load's unstable? <clears throat> yeah, okay. Pushing with all my strength got me nowhere. They didn't budge. I really need to start working out. Okay, so how do we get him away? We have to get him away from here. I guess. I mean. Hey, McGuire. What do you want to know? Are you sure Fitzgerald worked at the dig? Oh, yes. It was him, all right. Would I tell a lie? Well, he denies it. I saw them together only last night. I wish you'd told me that sooner. What were they doing? Pegram gave Fitzy a box. He didn't look too happy about it. I knew it. But how am I going to persuade him to part with it? Break his fingers. No, nah, I couldn't do that. I could. Thanks for the offer, kid, <laughs> but I'll try a more subtle I approach. could. Chinese Burns? Do you know where I could find Fitzgerald? He's inside, but you won't get no sense out of him. How come? Is he drunk? He's like a frightened rabbit. A real bag of nerves. Boy, the fella's scared of his own shadow. What's Fitzgerald scared of? Everything and everyone. So I shouldn't have any trouble getting him to talk? He's a pushover, but don't scare him too much. Try the soft touch. Butter him up a bit. I heard that Pegram had found a legendary gem. <laughs> you offered quickly, but right. listen, I know. It's been the talk of Loch Man all week. You haven't seen the gem, have you? Hell no. I reckon Pegram made off with it. If I was him, I'd go to Amsterdam chop it up and sell it. He could be living the life of Riley instead of digging holes. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. Let's try this guy again at the table, I guess. Somehow or another we gotta get the dude away from the haystack. I'm not sure I'll do that yet. It looks like we go on the back of a bar. Hello. McGuire says he saw you working at the dig. What's more, he saw you talking with Pegram. I knew this would happen. I knew I'd get caught. Just my luck. Grasped up by a delinquent and a dimwit. 
I need to talk to Professor Pegram, if he's still alive. What do you mean? Is he in danger? Yeah, you too, if I'm right. You're not from the Social Security. Hell no. What makes you think that? Well, uh, I was claiming benefits at the same time I was working for Pegram. I'm not in a position to make judgments, Sean. That's between you and your conscience. All I want is to talk to Pegram about the gem. But he's not here! I know that. But he left that package with you, didn't he? So where did Pegram go? I don't know. I swear it. He came to see me early this morning. Said he was leaving. So, so Pegram gave over the hill his package. <laughs> he asked me to give this package to a guy called Marque. Show me what's in the package, Sean. I, I can't do that. Why not? I promised the professor. So what? <laughs> You didn't have any qualms about your benefit scam. So where's the harm in taking a peek inside Pegram's package? You don't know these people. I can't. I don't dare. Give me the fucking package. I'll this is your last chance to show me the package, Fitzgerald. I've been patient with you, but now it's time to kick ass. Who do you <laughs> mean? Who will? I'm from Paris. Jack Marquet. Pegram told me if I gave him the package unopened, I'd hear no more about it. But if I double-crossed Marquet, I'd be dead. I'll deal with Jacques Marquet. Kay. Give the package to me. No. Why should I trust you? I don't know who to trust anymore. I wish I'd never even heard of the Lockmarn gem. Run over. <laughs> hey, I just seen a big red. Get out of here, Maguire. Come back when you're old enough. What's the lad howling about? A big red sports car. Sean Fitzgerald's been run over. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Don't you care. Noisy little tyke. Oh, you should yeah. send out some medicinal brandy maker. Oh yes, and who's going to pay for it? Not me. Me too, neither. Oh, wait, wait. Is there anything special on the table there? Hold on. I was telling the truth about Fitzy, mister. Okay, okay, calm down. Now tell me what happened. I was standing here, minding my own business, when I saw this beautiful red sports car coming up over the hill. Would you look at that, says I, and I going over to take a closer look. Next thing, Fitzy comes tearing out of the pub. It's a Ferrari and Lamborghini. Me on the ass, it's a Lamborghini. It's a Ferrari. Flies at him. It was too fast for poor old Fitzy, and hit him an awful wallop. He goes flying up on top. Jesus, says I. I thought he was a goner. Next thing, the driver hops out, and I couldn't believe my eyes. He was dressed like a bloody pixie. Hmm. Animations weren't too bad for what they were. Did this pixie have a scar on his cheek? I couldn't see. He was wearing a stupid mask. Are you a special agent? Sorry to disappoint you, kid, but I'm not. Did Fitzgerald I'm drop Bond. anything when he was here? James Bond. I didn't see. It all happened so fast. British intelligence. <laughs> uh. That's it. Hand, Shake my hand again. No way. Uh, Have you ever seen this man? What a slimy character. No. Nope. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. I pushed the switch down. But in doing so, it snapped off in my hand. What? 
It was impossible to return the switch to its original position. Switch for what? <laughs> right, you know what? Let, let me look at it. Is, can you look at it? The plastic cover had been smashed by the Pixie's car, revealing a switch. It was impossible to return the switch to its original position. I tugged at the trap door. What the hell's the switch for? You know nothing was there. I took hold of the grating and pulled hard. Yeah. I grabbed. I grab my grating every day and pull hard on it too, but you don't see me talking about it. So what was that for? He wasn't listening. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir. No, I don't want to know. Hey, they don't give a fuck. Uh, just give me a shout when you do. Hey. Hello there again, mister. What do you know about leprechauns, Doyle? Leprechauns? Is it the little people you're talking about? Sure, and a cousin of mine was wed to one? Oh, come on. Do you really expect me to believe that? It's the truth, I'm telling you. She fell asleep on a fairy ring, see? When she woke up, there he was. A little fella. All in green. Tell me more about your cousin and the leprechaun. No. Oh, no. Well, young Mary was <laughs> speechless. Especially when the leprechaun up and spoke to her. Be my bride, me darling, says he. And she'll never want for riches again. Okay, says she. And he slips a ring of daisies on her finger. Ah, yeah, it's so kind of what I, I was thinking too, but it, I thought maybe we'd turn off that dishwasher or something. Proof. All you have is her word for it. Not so. The following spring, she had a little baby. Did the leprechaun's promise come true? What promise was that now? That she'd never want for riches again. Now, there's the strangest thing. She never did. I thought you said she was claiming the social part. Indeed, Mr. O'Brien. But there's riches and riches. She told me, Pat, she says, that little darling boy is all the riches in the world to me. Bye for now. Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. Hello there. What now? The boy told me Fitzgerald was driven away in the car that hit him. McGuire is always spinning wild yarns. I don't know where he gets them from. Television, I expect, or comics. Video games. If I was you, I'd take what he says with a generous pinch of salt. McGuire's tale about the car sounds quite plausible to me. He says the driver was dressed like a leprechaun. That boy has a head full of fluffy toys. Goodbye for now. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> this fucking what? guy. What's that you're making? It's a necklace, me poco. Oh, sure. Made out of steel wire? <laughs> That's right. A necklace for my pretty one. When my little lover feels it round her slender neck, she'll be mine. All mine. <laughs> if I was a woman, I wouldn't think much of a wire necklace. It's not yet. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a leprechaun. I've yeah, got my fishy. sights on tastier dishes than women. Flesh as smooth and tender as a maiden. Bones are soft and white as a newborn babe's. Rabbit, that. That's what gets my juices flowing. 
Ah, so you're making snares to trap rabbits. That's right. Do you have a problem with that? Damn right I do. Isn't it painful? Only if I get me fingers caught. I'm talking about the rabbits. <laughs> do they feel much pain? You bet. <laughs> Did you ever see Fitzgerald at Pegram's dig? I never heard of either of them. Aren't you concerned about what happened to Fitzgerald? No. Yeah. I'll see you later. Get anywhere with these guys. Just wants another drink, right? This fucking guy over here. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir? I don't want anything. Uh, just give me a shout when you do. He wasn't listening. Sort of exhausting resources here. I'd, I'd really like to know what this is for. It was impossible to return the switch to its original position. <laughs> I tried to flip the switch with the lifting key, but it was much too cumbersome for the job. Hey, McGuire. What do you want to know? See you later, kid. Okay, mister. I mean, even if I wanted to, how do I get out of here? Can I even leave this place? Other than going up here to the haystack guy? Hi, it's me again. So I see. What now? Did you happen to see a red sports car down on the road? I caught a glimpse of a flash of red on the hill and heard the racket. Sure, it was an awful noise. A sports car, you say? A Ferrari, to be exact. A racing car? And what was it doing here? The poor fella must have been lost. The driver of the Ferrari was involved in an accident. Is that so? Yeah. He knocked somebody down outside the bar. What an idiot! How could a thing like that happen? He was traveling too fast. So fast, he ran right under the car? I mean, the car was traveling too fast. But you'd have thought the idiot could have heard it coming. Maybe you know the guy who was hit by the Ferrari. His name is Sean Fitzgerald. Oh, I know him all right. That's me nephew, the idiot responsible for the stacking of my hay cart. Was he killed by the car? Oh, no. But he has been abducted. Well, that's a relief now. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, man, nobody in town likes this guy. Aren't you going to look for your nephew? He was what uncle. for? From what you say, it's too late. Well, you can report the matter <laughs> to the police. Better not. Besides, what could they do? Well, they could mount a search. They have only the one bicycle between them. In a question of superior acceleration, I put me money on the Ferrari. I think you ought to know exactly what Sean has gotten himself into. I'm not sure I want to know. But you're his uncle. His own flesh and blood. You're right. But what can I do? If I'm not here to guard it, some idiot might try to climb the haystack. What a moral dilemma. Stay here and guard this potentially lethal agricultural construction. Or to go off in search of the prodigal nephew, the very man responsible for said hazard. 
It'll need some thinking about. Why, there's no problem. You're right. Why didn't I think of it before? We'll demolish the haystack. You don't have to demolish the haystack to go look for Sean. I'll stay here in your place and warn anyone who's silly enough to climb it. Marvelous! I think I should start me inquiries in the back. It's the old Bugs Bunny Daffy Duck thing. <laughs> he strode off in the direction of McDevitt's bar. Get out of here, you wanker. Contemplate the stack of hay. <clears throat> and just like that, we climbed up and fell down and broke our neck. The stack of hay stopped short of the top of the wall. Even if I stretched as far as I could, the wall was out of reach. What I needed was a slice or two of Alice's Wonderland. Alice's Wonderland. <laughs> hmm, maybe not. Hmm, no way. Hmm, no way. Come on, dude. Even I could climb that. Don't be such a bozy. All right. So what do we need? Hey, McGuire. What do you want to know? See you later, kid. Okay, mister. I'm not sure what to do at this point. <clears throat> well, oh, well, here's numb nuts. <laughs> introduce you to my pals. We've already met. I want you to know you have my sympathy. Oh, it's just terrible, awful. I like how he doesn't it's ask the fact we just walked away from day. the haystack. It's top to bad news <laughs> right watching for it for him. week and the next. The whole year? It's worse than that. It's the worst disaster in living memory. Isn't it the biggest calamity in the history of the village? Oh, you would say it's the biggest in the history of Ireland? The most awesome disaster since mankind paddled out of the primal plop. Alright, let's not There's overdo it, no fellas. Beer. Is a glass of beer more important than a man's life? Were you talking to me? To all of you. Sean Fitzgerald <laughs> has met with God knows what, and all you can do is drink. Sean has gone for a ride in a flash car, that's all. Why don't you calm down and join us? What about Sean? Why aren't you out looking for him? There's no point in launching an ill-equipped expedition to save the lad. In a life-or-death situation, preparation is essential. That's why I slipped in here. For a point. I gotta go. He wasn't listening. Oh, well. The man's arm lay across the towel, preventing me from moving it. Hey! Towel? Hello there again, mister! May I shake your hand? 
No, you can't. Bye for now. There's a towel here. I don't know what that's for. Well, I can use the phone. See, she's got any information for Hello? Couleur? J'écoute. Nico? Who is this? It's me, George. Oh, hello, George. Where are you? I'm in Ireland. What's it like there? Kind of sleepy. Comatose, even. Did you get to talk to Picaram? I haven't found him yet. I figured I'd call you first. Are you okay? Oh, sure I am. Don't worry about me, George. Any signs of our friend the clown? You're kidding. You probably never even heard of Lachmarn. Get out. Oh, maybe we need this Hello again. thing from him, maybe? What? Or not? I'll see you later. I was about to reach for the pump when I came to my senses. A rash move like that in a strange country with strange customs could be my last. Somehow, I'd managed to drink the thick, sweet brew. I felt strangely compelled to order another, even though my every instinct warned me against it. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir? May I have another beer, please? Certainly, sir. Same again? Yeah, please. How is this stuff made? That's the secret of the master. I wonder if I buy the beer you to the other guy so we can get the towel. And or what that's for? Fashion. Suspended on skillfully tied ropes of the finest hemp. Lowered into the cellar, utilizing the forces of original gravity. Uh, like manner from him. That's great. Just pour the fucking beer. I don't need all this story. I'm sorry, but the pump appears to be broken. I can fix it for you. I don't think so. This is a job for a professional electrician. Oh well, at least the glass washer is still working. It's not my idea, is it? Oh. It's a Thanks. progress? Excuse me? A yes, sir? I don't want anything. Uh, just give me a shout when you do. Hey! Hello there again, mister! Fuck. Oh! One of these guys an electrician? Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. Hello there! What now? Oh, nothing. Yeah, I flipped the switch, yeah. Hello! This pump ain't working, but I don't know what that does for us. I gotta go. Hello again. What? I'll see you later. Get out. I could try to fix your glass washer. Oh, no. Not unless you're a qualified electrician. I forgot this electrician's card. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, yes, sir? It just so happens I'm an electrician. Check out my credentials. Well, no. Isn't that marvelous? 
<laughs> Here's a house bedeviled with faulty wiring of a wayward nature. Here's you, an electric man, with a little plastic card to prove it. Hmm. I still want to see what you can do before I let you touch me beer pumps. You can make a start on the glass water. Oh. Well, somewhat progress. And when you finish that, will you take a look at the pumps? Sure. Just gonna stand there. <laughs> Can you walk, dude? What are you doing? There was nothing physically wrong with the glass washer. I used all my knowledge of electrical engineering to examine the plug. Seemed fine to me. <laughs> uh... Oh, I gotta pick that up as he moves his arm. The man's arm lay across... I, I know. As the man raised his arm to drink, I snatched the towel away. Okay. It was a rectangle of toweling printed with the words, Nagopaline Stout Builds Body. <laughs> gotta walk all why can't you just lean you're just, you gotta walk all the way around I was about to reach for the pump when I came to my senses a rash move like that in a strange country with strange said to check his pumps dude check the fucking pumps get out there Oh my god, dude, walk. Why is this so difficult? Get in there. There was nothing physically wrong with the glass washer. I was about to a rat. Well, well what? Are you going to fix this glass washer or not? I'm still waiting for you to fix this glass washer. Okay, keep your hair on. This drops the thing on the table every once in a while. I if we gotta grab it from <laughs> steal it. She's a bit early with it. Um, I'm not sure what to do. Does the towel do anything for us with that wall? <laughs> Just leave him. Leave him hang. Later, bruh. Wire. What do you want to know? 
See you later, kid. Okay, mister. Hey, McGuire. What do you want to know? What do you make of this, kid? Hey, that's one of Leary's towels. He'll skin you alive. That old windbag doesn't scare me. Anyhow, I'm only borrowing it. You're pretty cool, mister. For an old guy. Slow and he shrugs his shoulders like, "Fuck, you want me I to do with that?" I considered tying the towel to the grating, but it seemed pointless. Can I try this? Right. I tried to use the keys to lever up the grating, but that wasn't going to. I don't know. I'm not sure what it expects me to do next now. I still can't. I don't think I can just try using the towel up here. Or, uh, I don't see how it's going to help get us over the wall. Yeah, he just shrugged his shoulders. Hmm. No way. Hmm, maybe not. <sighs> well, I guess because uh, my food's waiting downstairs, I guess this will probably be a good spot to stop it. I'm just stopping inside the the bar. Oh, let's try it. I don't know. He did shrug his shoulders here, though. At least I thought it did. Yeah. I, mean, I did try this on here, right? The workman's key was the obvious tool to use to open this trap door. It was specifically designed for a job like this. Unfortunately, there weren't any holes in the trap door. Yeah, I don't know. Nope. No. Yeah, I think we'll just save it here, guys. We'll pick this up again next week. <laughs> Seems like the logical thing here. No. Just save it. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Bar. Broken dishwasher. Or glass washer or whatever. Whatever the fuck it is. <clears throat> Alright. That'll be it for this one, guys.